Today's collectible spot, we are having a look at the Sideshow Collectible Star Wars R2-D2 Deluxe 6 scale figure. The R2-D2 has light up effects, also comes with a side table that can have the projection of Princess Leia on display. A very fun addition, and I gotta say, R2 is gonna have a ton of different accessories. Looking forward to getting this out of package. Speaking of package, the box that comes with the R2-D2 is pretty much the same box, the same style of box, being that it's all black with the ba banner stripped down below. It's essentially the same box that we're seeing with a lot of the other Sideshow collectible Star Wars six scale figures. And also one of the same features too that carries over. Let's go ahead and spin the package around. We've got R2-D2 there and the R2-D2 deluxe figure on the front. But like other six scale figures from Sideshow, there's also the Velcro uh, magnetize, I should say, closure that you can open up. And while it doesn't have a read up on the side of R2-D2, you can still vis visibly see, visibly see, the R2-D2, all the components, all the accessories that this figure is going to come with. And he comes with a lot. Uh, spot's going to take a break though. That being said, box aside, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to get this opened up. And when we come back, we're going to get a better look at R2-D2. There's more Henny Way, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. With R2-D2 out of packaging, the first thing I would probably suggest that you guys do is go through and just kind of have a look through the instruction guide. Normally, I would say this anyways, but I think specifically with R2-D2, because he has so many small components and things that you have to be aware of, some pieces can be a little more fragile than others. So I would say, do read through this before, we, uh, before you... Uh, start playing around with R2. Don't worry, Spot will show you all the stuff anyways, but we'll put that to the side. So let's have a look at R2-D2. He's a fantastic, phenomenal piece. Um, the one thing, I guess the one critique I could probably make about it is the fact that it's not metal. I feel like an R2-D2, and maybe it's just the fact that we're so spoiled now with Iron Man, uh, Robocop to some extent, because of, well, later the two-pack Robocop was plastic, but at least like the Robocops and the Iron Mans were now metal. I just kind of feel like I wish R2-D2 was more metal than he was plastic. There's a good considerable amount of detail that's been put into him, but I just kind of feel like for a droid like R2, I would want that little bit of extra weight that you would come to expect from, from it being metal. Granted, I understand that a figure that's roughly about $180 uh, could easily jump to closer to about $250, $300 if he was metal, but I kind of wish that he was just a little bit, a little bit more than just, uh, than just plastic. That being said though, he's just really immaculately detailed. He looks exactly like how he does in the movie. I mean, R2 pretty much is the one consistent character that appears really in all the movies. That I guess could also be said for, uh, you know, C-3PO. But, uh, you know, I think he's a good representation, not specifically from one any one of those movies. He could really represent R2 from any of those movies. He does have components, I feel like, that gear him a little more towards uh, Return of the Jedi more so. But still, I think you could put this guy in a display case. And again, he's not an R2 necessarily from Return of the Jedi unless you incorporate the drink tray. He really could be R2 really from any number of the movies. He's got a good level of paint to him, uh, paint especially on the under, kind of the lower tread area of his two standalone uh, legs. He's also got a little bit of more of the dirt around the bottom base of him. He's not white. He's not a white robot. He's more of a cream color, but you can see he's got the scuff and the dirt marks, um, really implying that the, you know, he's he's been through a lot of different adventures, uh, this little R2 unit here. Uh, he is superposable. I guess superposable in the sense that if we look at just the straight out legs, uh, his legs can pose really as far back as that. Not that you would display R2 you know, with his legs completely back like that. And of course, as R2 would be, his head fully rotates all the way around. Though he doesn't have any sound effects, R2-D2 does have lights. To access the lights, as we've seen, his head does spin all the way around. What you want to do is the section that spins is the gray, the bottom gray of his dome. That's actually the part that, that spins. So just grab that section with your fingers and you wanna take the dome itself and rotate it. Rotate it counterclockwise to 
to pop it off of its base. There's the interior of R2's units, or at least the, the body of R2. Then you can go ahead and take his head. The head upside down, there is the battery compartment. I've already got the batteries in there, so you don't have to you know, I won't have to put the batteries in for the for the sake of this review. And your light switch is right at the side there. I wish, if anything, the the battery compartment and especially the switch were on the outside of R2's dome helmet, as opposed to having to take the head off every single time. And when you put it on, especially, you got to be very careful that there's a wider there's a wider plug peg area here, and there's a shorter peg. You see the two right here. When you look at the body, the same idea applies here. A wider gap and a, a narrow gap. So you've got to make sure that you put the right tab on the right side. Because you don't want the last thing you want to be doing is putting a lot of weight on it and it breaks. Put it on and just kind of turn it counterclockwise, and that locks everything in place. And there you have the light-up features for R2D2. The front section lights up, it, it cycles through red and blue. He's got the little white readouts that go back and forth on the one side. He's got the light up projector on the front. And then we spin around in the back. He's got a cycled through yellow and then green light. And he's got a back section here that lights up. Now to change the light options, there's a little button on the side. It's not a press button, it's actually a touch sensitive button. So when you put on R2's helmet, you might notice right away, it doesn't look like it's turning on. The little switch right here touch sensitive you see that and you almost don't even have to put your finger to it in fact let me just show you guys how sensitive that is I'm I'm not even really touching it to turn it on and it cycles through different modes off on which has just the readout here the lights the cycle through lights on the front and back and then touch it again and then you've got the projection light and this section here also ball joints. There's a ball joint section there where that rotates. It's pretty cool though, but you will find as you're putting the dome on, taking the dome off, you will notice that it may cycle through those lights as you're pressing the dome itself. So it's, it's a neat touch that they include that. I wish though it was on the outside rather than having to, you know, take the dome off every single time, switching the light on and off, putting it back on. You could easily just turn off R2 altogether and just put them in the display case like this. But one thing I will always say when it comes to battery powered anything, especially a high-end collectible like R2 here, I wouldn't leave the batteries in. I take the dome, take the batteries completely out and leave R2 displayed exactly how you see there. That way you don't run the risk that the batteries are gonna leak. And then all the light functions, the functionalities on R2 will be gone. A cool little also nod to detail here, Sideshow Collectibles included something that kind of was a little surprising. Apparently in the movie, the side panels of R2's legs do change. They swap them, uh, not inconsistently, they, they swap them because uh, R2 had to be assembled pre-scene. And so a lot of times, uh, these little panels, when they were putting together R2, you might find a couple of scenes where the legs are actually switched the other way around. And Sideshow went as far as to give you the options that you could do the exact same thing with R2 yourself. You could take the legs and switch them around. It's, it's kind of cool that they would have included uh, really a, a movie flub by the fact that this changes kind of throughout the movie. But it's neat though that uh, you know Sideshow would have gone as far as giving you that option to change that out. R2-D2 has a ton of different panels and different areas that open up on him. To get to those areas, you can either do it with your fingers. I mean, a lot of these areas are accessible by using your fingers themselves. Or you can also use one of the accessories, which is Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. Just by looking at it, it would look like it's just a regular lightsaber. However, the bottom end of it is a magnet. So while you can do it still with your finger, the easiest way to access the, the panels is by using the lightsaber. And there's magnets on the ends of every one of those panels that open up, and it makes things a lot easier to access them, especially panels such as this, which might not be the easiest to get to with your hand, or at least with your finger. It also doesn't help if you drop the lightsaber. Some of the other uh, components, the other compartments, I should say, that section opens up. Uh, I thought this section does, but it actually does not. This 
side opens up and this side although you got to be careful with this panel here I want to open that up after the fact so you've got uh, what one two three four five and six featured on the front of r2d2 it doesn't stop there though actually you know what it does kind of stop there just for one second because while we're at it and while we've got these sections open i want to show you some of the other accessories that he comes included with one is the little zap uh, little extended arm that he comes included with he's also got the the little pincer uh, grabbing claw and he's also got this as well now the exclusive there was a sideshow exclusive version of r2d2 that also came with a couple of extras of these one one of which being the buzzsaw blade doesn't really bother me that i didn't get the extra ones their regular r2 is just fine so we can go ahead and depending on which one you want to use uh, this easily just pegs into place like that and you have one of them there these can be a little harder to get to because you got to get your finger in there but these extend out and you can add the other ones in there if you so wish you don't have to necessarily be screen accurate some would say oh well this goes here this arm goes here but really you have the option to mix and match to your heart's content Take the claw, the little pincer, and that can go right there. These hinge, by the way, up and down, and these also slide up and down too. So you can have them at various heights, various angles, and again, you can switch them in and out depending on which tools you want to have displayed with R2. All right, so let's go ahead and flip R2-D2 up. I want to just kind of hold my hand here so none of the panels kind of start popping open on me. Uh, he has a few access points at the top here as well. And we go ahead and use the lightsaber tool once again. Take the end, flip it around there. He's got one section here that's going to be for the drink articulated hand. I'll show you guys that in a second. Uh, he's got a section on the side here. Now for these, you want to just push them down with your finger. One is the satellite, little satellite like radar dish section here. This rotates. I find with these though, especially this one, because it's a fragile plastic, you have to push it back in, snap it into place before this closes back shut. Both the panel and, in this case, the little radar dish is kind of on the fragile side, so be a little careful with that. We spin this around to the other side. This one here also pushes down. And this one you might recognize a little bit more than the other little periscope as well. This rotates also working with a spring and that pushes back down and finally the last compartment if you remember return of the jedi luke's uh, concealed lightsaber was concealed right on the front here now for this you have to push it down and hopefully my finger is not covering this push it down and you want to slide this kind of to the side it doesn't slide completely over in fact that's a about as far as it goes before it starts hinging itself back but you can take the lightsaber and let's see if I can give you guys a better look here inside there is a little hole compartment it it goes pretty much as far down as the base of his dome you can take the lightsaber and you have to be careful with this I had some problem doing this earlier where the lightsaber got stuck especially when you get to the top you have to kind of move this out of the way and push it down from there uh, a lot of times though and i've done this enough times to know that if you push it down all the way it can be a little hard to get the lightsaber out but take my word for it the lightsaber does go all the way down it just is a real pain in the butt to get it back out so a lot of times what i might e either do is just not even keep the lightsaber in there or i might just have it pop you know sticking out just a little bit uh, exactly like how it looked on the uh, on Java's sand barge. If you remember, much like the movie, uh, R2-D2 has either two legs or three legs, depending on what scene he's in. Generally, when he's just standing or walking, you usually only relies on the two legs here. And there's a little bit of pivot to the two legs. They've got the free rolling wheels underneath. But if you want to have R2-D2 with the third leg, what you want to do is spin it upside down, this is the third leg right here. Take it, push it in, and that detaches the leg. And then from there, the leg pulls out. 
and it locks. So at least it's not gonna slide back in on you. Then you can adjust the legs back, adjust the feet or the struts, I guess. And then you have R2D2 with his three legs and he rolls really well. He still, let's turn him on completely. There we go. He rolls extremely well, squeaks a little bit, but he rolls extremely well. And then when you're done, go ahead, fold the feet. I, I like to fold the feet so that they're parallel to the opening and then just push that, push it back in. There we go. And you can have R2 back up to just the standing mode like that. Other accessories that you can incorporate with R2-D2 is the drink tray that he has in Java's uh, sand barge. For that, um, I guess the easiest thing to do, he comes with drinks as well. He has a total of seven drinks. They are all pretty much the same to one another with the gold banding around the glass itself. And there's an unknown green liquid inside. Little holes on the tops, uh, round pegs, you guessed it. So we'll just clip into place. There's one. There's two, there's three. I guess I probably should have done this the other way, but we'll just do it this way for now. There's four, there's five, six, whoops, try not to drop this one, six, and seven. I do realize now after the fact, I probably should have attached the legs first, then go ahead and take the supplied legs. And you wanna clip these in place. There's one, and go ahead and clip the other legs in place. There we go. Then go ahead and take the drink tray. It's just basically a, a round beveled edge, and that just sits over top of his legs, just like that. The other accessory that we can incorporate then as well is the articulated arm that he has also during the scene. And there's several different areas that this poses at. There's a hinge here. There's a slight hinge here, although that kind of disrupts the piston that's moving at the top there. This also pivots and the arms pivot there. And then there's a pivot point there. So there's about four different pivot points, uh, rotational, not rotation, but little hinge points on the arm. Go ahead and take the lightsaber, pop this back open and we can take the arm just at first. And that just pegs into place depending on how you want to display r2 it's a cool look don't get me wrong it's a really cool look and it you know it's it's not iconic but i mean it's one of the images that you really remember from r2 having the drink tray it's not my preferred look as how i'm likely going to be displaying him but i think it's kind of cool that they would have gone ahead and incorporated that i guess also to complete the look we can go ahead and take the restraining cog and that also magnetized, clips right onto the front. The last and by far the largest of the accessories that we're gonna have a look at is the tabletop where uh, the holographed, uh, hologram image of, uh, of Princess Leia is projected onto. There's a battery compartment on the underneath. We can just pull that out. I've already just, I kept that in there just to uh, keep the batteries from going on like that. And uh, what we can do, reach off camera to the included Princess Leia. Now it's small, but for how small that is, it's still super detailed. It's got almost like a, like a ras kind of a blue raspberry candy look to it. It's translucent, so it, it shows perfectly like it would as a, a holographic image. And for that, what we want to do is take the lightsaber we want to remove the cap from the tabletop here, and we want to add Princess Leia. And she just snaps, just snaps into place, kind of just tabs into place more so, and you can have R2-D2 projecting Princess Leia. Of course, to complete this successful look, what you will also want to do is take one of the, I guess these are like a little nozzle here, and you want to want to press this down. Pressing it down will light up the base for Princess Leia, and then we can go ahead and turn on R2. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. And here's a closer look at what it looks like. 
the translucency of that blue really shows that light extremely well. And again, to turn it off, I'm just going to go ahead and press this down and it switches it off. A really neat effect. When it's all said and done, R2-D2 turned out fantastic. He does have cons, I'll admit it, he does have some cons, one of which being it's kind of a pain in the butt to have to take his dome off every single time if you wanted to switch him off and or change batteries. I worry that taking the dome off um, and then putting it back on sooner or later, I worry that something's going to break on it. I like that it does have the touch sensitive light on the front. At least you don't have to open the dome every single time you want to turn him on. Some of the compartments are a nice touch. I don't miss some of the options and accessories that R2-D2 from the prequels would have had, like the thruster legs. I don't miss stuff like this because really at the end of the day, what I'm wanting to display is a super detailed, super authentic, realistic look of R2-D2. And I think Sideshow Collectibles has done a service to it. Truthfully, I will admit, yeah, I wish it kind of had a little bit of metal to it, just a little bit of added weight to it. But still, for everything that it is, and the fact that it's a relatively inexpensive high-end collectible, I think R2 hits a lot more pros than I think it does cons. Uh, now Spot certainly just wants to get himself a C-3PO, and the dynamic duo, so to speak, can stand together in a display case. Spot also picked this up from the folks over at Brian's Toys. I'll provide the link down below if you guys are interested in picking up R2-D2 for yourself. Today's collectible spot, we were looking at the Sideshow Collectibles Star Wars, the R2-D2 Deluxe figure. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more collectible spots heading your way. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.